Hey, what's up everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now in today's video, we're going to learn how to code a quiz app in C Sharp. Now making a multiple choice quiz is a super easy concept. We've done it in school all the time. And now let's just code the actual thing for ourselves. So let's go ahead and create a new project. And we're going to choose the console app option here. And then we're going to call it quiz or quiz app or I don't know, whatever you want to call it. And go ahead and click create. All right, guys, now that we're actually in here, let's go ahead and remove the starter code that they gave us. And let's create a class called quiz program. And we're going to open up these curly braces here. And the very first thing we're going to do is create a main method. So we're going to go ahead and say static void main and have no arguments to that. And all of our program code is actually going to take place within this main method. And let's think about how we want to lay this out. So we need to have some sort of list of questions that we can pull from to show the user. We also need a list of answers to go along with those questions to show the user. And then finally, once we have the questions and the answers, we need to validate whether or not the user um, you know, got the questions right or wrong. And we need some way to collect all of this information from them. So without further ado, let's just hop right into it. And we're going to begin by creating our list of questions. And this is going to be a array full of uh, strings. And we're just going to initialize it here. And now let's think about what kind of questions that we want to use. Now I have a pre-selected list of questions that I've made specifically for this video. But honestly, if you just you know want questions, you can think of them your own, or you could just Google trivia questions or something. And you know, you'll find a bajillion of them out there on the internet. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fill in three different questions here that I have for this video. So the first question is what book holds the record for the fastest selling book in history with a question mark. And then the next question, how old was Queen Elizabeth II when she was first crowned the Queen of England. And then finally, we're gonna say which blood type is a universal donor? So I'm just gonna go ahead and start out with those three questions here. And let's go ahead and put a semicolon at the end of our uh, squiggly bracket right here. And then let's go ahead and start creating the answers for these questions. So just like before, we're going to have a, a an array full of strings and we're gonna call it answers. And we're going to just open up these brackets here. And here it's going to be a little different. Of course, there's still going to be three different strings here for us to use. Instead of just spelling out the whole string, we're actually going to need to make multiple choice options within this. So the first one up, we're going to have, you know, an A, a B, and a C. And in between each of those, we're going to have a break line at the beginning of each one. And for A, let's just go ahead and start punching in our answers here. So first we could say the Hunger Games is you know, choice one. We could say Harry Potter and the Deathly Hollows is the second one. And then the third one can be to kill a mockingbird. So that's all we need to do to set up our, you know, multiple choice questions. And we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing for the next two. The next one, I, I usually just like to do the same thing every time. So just set up A, B, and C, and then put break lines in between each one. And honestly, let's just copy this to the next line so we don't have to do it again. So for choice A, we could say 27. And then for choice B, we could say, you know, uh, 24. And then for choice C here, we're going to say 31. And then finally, now that we're talking about blood types in this third one, we're going to just, just say um, B positive, And then we're going to say O negative. And then the final one will be just AB. So we have our questions and our answers created. So now let's think about what we need to do next. So next, we should decide which ones are the right answers and then store that in some sort of array to check against later. So what we're going to do is just create an array full of ints called correct answers. And that's going to be equal to just these empty squiggly brackets here with a semicolon. And now we just need to put in the index of the correct answer for each question. And what I mean by that is, so like this first question, for example, what book holds the record for the fastest selling book in history? Um, we need to put the answer to that in this first index here. And we also need to decide which one of these answers is the correct one. Now, luckily for me, I do know the right answer, and that is B, and that is at index one. So for option number one here, we're just going to say 
that index one is the correct one. So now we have, you know, how old was Queen Elizabeth? Um, we know that she was 24, because that's the correct answer. That's also at index one, so we're gonna put one once again. And then finally, which blood type is a universal donor? It is O negative, which is index one once again, but honestly, I'm just gonna switch these two just to switch it up a little bit. So I'm gonna move um, O negative to spot A and then B positive to spot B. Question number three, the answer should be at index zero. So now your array should look like this and your overall code should look something like this at this point. The next thing we wanna do is go ahead and create an integer to keep track of the player's score. We're just going to initialize that at zero. All right, guys, now that we have all of our questions and our answers and our, you know, where the right thing is, let's go ahead and start building our actual program and, you know, what the user is going to see. So what we're going to begin with is just a simple console.write line. And we're going to say, welcome to the best quiz app ever with a smiley face. And then we're going to go ahead and create a for loop here. And this is going to loop through each of our questions and we're going to do some validation in here. So we're gonna say, you know, for int i is zero, i is less than questions.length, and then we're going to increment i after each loop. So the first thing that we wanna do once we're actually inside of the loop is go ahead and print out the question that, you know, the user needs to answer. So the first thing we're gonna say is console.writeline. Honestly, we could just say, you know, questions at I, but if we want to take it up a notch, we could say question and then put a number. So we could say, hey, this is going to be question number. And then you can do plus I, and that's going to be question number one. And then after the fact, we can actually print out the question itself. So just like you saw before I removed it, we're actually just going to print out questions at I on the next line here and make sure it's a right line. That way it creates a brand new line and it doesn't just keep doing it on the same one. And now what we need to do after we've shown them the question is give them the actual choices for that question. So just like before, we're going to do something super similar. We're gonna say console.write line and we're gonna do answers at i. That way we are printing out question one, for example, and then printing out the choices for question one. And then we're gonna go ahead and do console.write instead of just write line. And we're going to say, please enter your answer and then we're going to put in parentheses here we're going to do single quotes a comma single quotes b and then a comma and then say or and then single quotes c finally outside of this we're going to do a colon and a space and then a semicolon and now that the user can see the questions the choices for the question and it's prompted you know they're prompted to say hey whether a b or c we need a way to collect that so we're going to say string player answer is equal to console dot read line and that will go ahead and collect the, you know, keyboard arguments from the user and store it into this string variable here. And now that we're done with that, let's just go ahead and start validating our answer. So let's go ahead and validate answers. Honestly, let's just run the app right now just to ensure that it's working up to this point. So if we go ahead and do this, we'll notice question zero is up first and let's, that's already a bug that we need to fix, but let's move on. So it says, you know, here's the question. Here's the options. They're all on their own line, which looks nice. And please enter your answer. And you can see I could type here, which is good. So let's go ahead and fix question zero and make sure that it says question one. So instead of question is I, we're gonna take some parentheses around I and do I plus one. So now if we run it again, you'll notice question one is question one instead of question zero, which makes sense. All right, guys, now it's time to actually validate the answers from the user. And there's a variety of ways to do this. We can make a function, we can make, you know, all these different things, but I'm just gonna keep it super simple for this tutorial. We're just going to have an if, an else if, and then finally, one last else if after that. The reason that we're doing this is because every single answer, or sorry, every question has A, B, or C as the options, and that's what we need these three um, statements for. And the first thing we're going to do in these statements is go ahead and say string dot equals. And we're going to use this because we want to compare two strings. Now, what two strings are we talking about, you might ask? Well, the first one is player answer, which is the input from the user. And then we're going to compare that to the letter A. Because this if statement is going to be targeted at confirming whether or not the ch correct choice is A for the index of the loop that we're in. So if we're on index you know, zero, so question one up here, 
Um, if the correct answer is A, which it isn't, but let's just imagine it is, um, we want to check if the player put in A as their option and then go ahead and um, also do another check to make sure that that lines up with whatever is in this array to say whether or not that's the right answer. Now, I know that was a super long explanation and I'm sorry if it was confusing, but I think it'll make more sense in a second here. So now what we're going to also do is pass in an optional parameter into our um, string.equals method here. And we're going to say string comparison dot and then order... I think it's called ordinal ignore case. Basically what it's saying is, you know, if they enter a capital A or a lowercase a, they're still going to get the answer right. Say that someone's wrong just because they didn't do a capital A if they did a lowercase a. They still answered A, it's just, you know, not the right case. So not only are we gonna do that, but we're also going to take it a step further. And let me kind of get this out of the way here so we have more room to see our code. And then right after that, we're gonna go ahead and say, that the correct answers array up here at index i is also equal to zero. And what that's saying is, so if this is question whatever, and the right answer is a, and we confirmed already that the user has entered a, and that's all good, we also need to make sure that whatever question we're on, which is stored in index i, index zero has to be at that um, index in this array. If it's a zero, we know that it's choice A, if it's a one, it's choice B, if it's two, it's C, and so on. So it needs to be zero in order for it to match up with an A, and this is all we're going to need inside of this if statement here. And if they are right, let's just go ahead and increment the player score by one. Now that we've done the kind of the hard part, honestly, you could just copy this here, paste it two more times and just change the stuff. So we're gonna change this to capital B, change this one down to a capital C, change this far right thing to a two, and then this other one to a two as well. And that's all we're going to need for our actual validation of answers. And don't forget to go ahead and paste this player score inside of each one of these brackets here. And honestly, guys, that's all we're gonna need for this for loop. Once that's over with, we know all the questions have been through. So now let's calculate their score for them. So we're gonna go ahead and add a comment, print score out to user console.writeline your score is and then a bracket or sorry a colon and a space and what we're going to do here is go ahead and say plus and then we're going to say that the player score is the next thing up and then we're going to add a um, division symbol here because you know what why don't we just say how many questions they got right out of how many questions there are so if we know there's three total um we could put three you know we could hard code three right here but instead of that we're going to make it dynamic we're just going to take questions.length, put that right here. Because even if we increase the amount of questions, this will dynamically update and so will the player score. So we never have to change this line of code again. And one more thing, why don't we just say that they're done right above it. So console.writeline, we're gonna say quiz completed with an exclamation mark. All right guys, now that we're done with that, let's just go ahead and run our program to ensure that works. So question one, what book holds the book record for the fastest selling book in history? I know that it's B, but just to, just for fun, I'm gonna answer wrong. So we're just gonna say, um, you know, A. And then how old was Queen Elizabeth II? I know that she, it was 24. So for this one, I'm gonna do a lowercase B. And then which blood type is a universal donor? I know that the correct answer is O negative. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say capital A. And you'll notice that our final score is two out of three, which is the correct score. So we know the whole casing thing is, is ignoring it properly. The whole quiz is working, the scores are right, and that's awesome. So let's go ahead and complete this tutorial, guys. I hope you had fun, and if you did, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and comment down below any thoughts or suggestions for the next video. If you enjoy content like this, go ahead and subscribe to my channel for more of it. And with that being said, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next one.